You'll never believe what the seller said about our creative offers. I was honestly shocked and it just made me scratch my head to think like, really? My name is Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. And today's video is creative financing, how we offered on our second co-living property and I'm giving you an update on it. So let's jump in. So a few weeks ago, my wife and I found this property on the MLS and we started watching it and it was for 550,000. And over time, we just kind of kept our eyes on it and we saw the price dropping, 525, 500,000. And when it hit 500,000, we said, hey, this could work. Let's go check it out. Now it's an eight bedroom, three bath house. And you guys can see it here in the video that we walked in. We did a reel on Instagram and here on YouTube, which by the way, if you're not on Instagram and following us at the Joe Moffitt or at Master Life by Design, please give us a follow. And on YouTube here at Master Life by Design, give us a subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when updates are coming of new videos and content being put out. So we put out reels around this property you've seen that we just gave you a tour of and Honestly, it's only for investors. A bedroom, three bath house, it doesn't have a master bedroom, doesn't have a master bath, it needs a ton of work, and there's no living room. So the pool of people to buy this is usually going to be an investor. So we decided to put in three offers using creative financing so that we could see, hey, let's strike a deal. And what's great is the seller owns the property outright. So they can do seller financing, we can be creative, find out what works for them. So here's the three offers we made. Number one, we were going to do $400,000 with a DSCR loan, debt service coverage ratio loan, which means basically it's not on your debt to income ratio. It's not based on your, your credit and all that, but you do have to put 20% down and whatever the monthly mortgage is going to be, let's say it's two grand a month, you got to make sure the rents cover that or greater. So that was our first offer. Second offer was a seller financing of $450,000 we would put $50,000 down at 5% interest for a 10 to 15 year balloon. But they would have to pay for their agent and our agent's fees. So that would come out to $27,000, which left them $13,000 in pocket. And I was okay with that, but I didn't really want that one. What I really wanted was option three. And option three, which I was really excited about, is $500,000 giving them full price asking offer for a property that needs about $70,000, $80,000 worth of work. 0% interest, which is awesome for me as the investor. And a 10 to 15 year balloon, which I would pay my agent fees of $15,000. However, we would give them $25,000 as a cash down payment and they would have to pay their agent 15,000 and they would pocket 10,000 out of that. Now, the only thing was that the monthly payments would have been around 1,300 and change, but my agent gave me some great advice and said, hey, you know what, let's do $2,500 a month payments. That'll be more enticing. I said, no problem. Here's why I liked it. I'd still cash flow significantly, we'll talk about that, but we would be paying $30,000 a year on principal only. So at 10 years, we would have $300,000 of the house paid off out of the 500. So we would only have $200,000 left to pay off after 10 years. You could refinance that, you could and have a very low monthly payment and increase your cash flow or renegotiate to push it to another 10 years, which it wouldn't happen in 10 years because we would pay off the loan, right? So, but I was really excited about that. So we submitted our offers. Here's what happened next. So I was sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, my agent reached out to their agent and the seller said they're taking none of the offers. And I'm sitting there like, what? So I was absolutely blown away. Now to kind of defend the seller here, I don't know what their options are. Maybe they need the money as a down payment for another place they're going to live, although they don't live there now at the current property we're looking to buy there, it's gone. Maybe it's someone in their family sick and they need to pay medical bills. I don't know, but I really felt like you can only have price or terms. So I was giving them the price they wanted on my third option, but I needed my terms, right? And so with that being said, they came back and said, they're actually gonna do some updates to get more value. Now here's the problem with that. The comps are only around 550,000. And so they're not gonna get more than that. Anyone who's gonna buy this property already with no master bath or bedroom or no living room, it's gonna be an investor first and foremost who's gonna buy the property. But if you're gonna go put in flooring and change out this and that, paint and all that, you're gambling you're really gonna put 10, $20,000 back into the property and 
what's gonna happen is if an investor doesn't like what you put in, guess what? Your pool of people to buy shrinks significantly. You're literally trying to find a needle in a haystack in one of the most challenging markets we've had in this last, I don't know, five years? So I was absolutely blown away. I told my agent to tell their agent this, pigeonhole in yourself. You're only gonna find a small investor because investors like me, we use the same SKUs for pain and for the walls and the trim and baseboards. And we also have our own cabinet SKUs that we like to use. And so if we don't like it, we're gonna rip all that out. I'm not paying for money to rip out something that's brand new that we don't like. It just doesn't make sense. And so they said, you know what? They're still gonna move forward with it. I was like, okay, we'll wait it out. Now at this point, we're about a hundred days on market for this property, which is just over the number of what the average home price in our, our homes stay on the MLS in our area. But this is a different one. So I go out of town and I come back a week later and I get a notification, an email saying that they're doing an open house on a Saturday. And so I asked my agent to reach out to there and say, hey, what updates did you do? And they didn't do flooring. They only did some paint and some like change out some hardware, some knobs and stuff. Nothing to significantly increase. Guess what happened? Zero offers. So a week later, I come, I'm out of town and I get an email again, but this time it's a price drop. 490,000 for the property. And I sent it to my agent. I'm like, what are they thinking? So now I'm at the point where I'm just gonna sit back and wait. And I'm gonna have my agent reach out like every week or every 10 days to just say, hey, we're here with offers. Now, I'm not going to keep my same offers. Every time they drop, I'm going to drop mine also. If they want this off their plate, it's just sitting there. Yes, the only thing they have to pay for is insurance and taxes. That's really, it. it's not a big, hurt to them, but the property needs about $80,000 worth of work because I know because my contractor went over there and told me, he line itemed everything. With that being said, I was sitting there and I'm just so baffled. So here's my strategy moving forward. I'm gonna stay in touch with them every you know week or 10 days, like I said, and I'm gonna to have to, if they drop down to 475, my number one offer is gonna be, hey, 375. I'm going to be 100 grand less than what they are. Number two offer is going to be, instead of 450, it's gonna be 425 with the same terms. And then my third offer is going to be what they're asking for. Let's just say they dropped to 475. I'll give you 475, but again, 0% interest, $25,000 down, I'll pay my own agent commission. I'll keep everything the same, but it's just all gonna drop. I don't know if it's pride, if it's delusion, I'm not, not trying to talk bad about them, but like they think they're going to get market pricing with the condition of the current property. No one's going to do that. The only person that might do that is someone that's really desperate for a property and they're willing to live in it and fix it up over time. But even in this situation, it would be a very 0.01% that would actually do that because it's a lot of work and a lot of money. So with that, I'm going to keep you guys updated. Right now they're sitting at 490,000. We're gonna reach out next week and say, hey, our offer, we're still willing to give you three offers if you're willing to negotiate. But they might not like what we come with, but if they wanna get it off their plate, this is the art of negotiating, the art of a deal, right? If you haven't listened to that book by Donald Trump, it's a really good one. Really, really enjoy. So with that, I wanna just say this. Here's why we're doing all this. The reason why we're doing all this is because we want to cash flow even more. So many of you, you've seen that we've done our first co-living property, which is awesome that we are in two days, we will have all eight rooms filled. So you guys can see here a video of our property that we rehabbed, we bought in January of 2024. We rehabbed it, we turned a 5.2 into an 8.3, and now we're renting out eight rooms, which we are cash flowing around $3,500 a month after all expenses, which is awesome. Now we're looking to do that with a second co-living property. So we match and mirror exactly what we're doing on this first one with the second one. We're at $7,000 a month cash flow. Before I end, I wanna say this, $3,500 a month cash flow. Let's say I pay $500 for people that are going to manage my property. If we do 10 deals over the next five years, that's two deals a year, that's over $30,000 a month. You know, what would change in your life? Who could you impact? Who wouldn't be affected by you winning? 
right? Like what would life look like because of that? We're not special. My buddy Sam teaches. If you want to learn, let me know. But I will say this, we are going down that path. And if you want to join us on the journey, come join us. We want you there. Being financially free is huge. And I always say financial freedom's not the end goal. It's the starting line. So if you're interested, reach out. We can help support you on that journey. My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a great one. See ya.